Okay, evening everybody. Welcome to our cozy little meeting here in this nice big room. Uh, we'll start like we always do to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then if you would uh, remain standing for our invocation this evening to be given by Bishop Eric Zebley of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Our eternal Father in heaven, we bow our heads in humility and gratitude and thank thee for this opportunity that we have to meet tonight. We are grateful for the gift and sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful to live in this free land, to be able to meet and to be part of our communities. We pray that thou would forgive us collectively and individually for any offenses. We thank thee for the opportunity to meet tonight and invite thy Holy Spirit to be here, that we may do thy will. These things we humbly pray for in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. I don't get to say Bishop very often, so I thought I'd say it twice this week. So, okay, uh, let's turn it over to Doug for approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the September 21st, 2017 board work session meeting minutes. So move. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the September 28, 2017 Board of Directors regular meeting minutes. So move. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Good. I should have mentioned there is one addition to the agenda. Tom? Uh, we're going we're gonna to add... Uh, we're going to talk about the Metfield Clubhouse private club permit, and we'll add that to the bottom right after the Valley Task Force update on the H and H study. All right, still you for. Uh, we're going to move on to the employee recognition. Good evening, my name is Cindy Bassett and I'm the Director of Human Resources for the POA. Tonight we are going to uh, introduce our maintenance team from the Metfield course. You guys want to come on up here and join me? Tap the audience. <laughs> We're kind of in the front, I don't know if you want to turn around a little bit. So first off, we have Rob Dreesen down here at the end. He is the superintendent over this group, and I will let him introduce his team to you. We got Scott Hansen, my assistant, Chris Norman, full-time, uh, Chris Lewis, seasonal, Marvin Snell, variable, Ryan Davis, <laughs> seasonal, and uh, Trevor Holmes, full-time, Dean Anderson, full-time. So Rob and the entire Met Metfield maintenance team went over and above in order to prepare for the 2017 Men's Club Championship. Rob and his team came out early every day for two weeks prior to this event, continually creating uh, the most ideal course conditions for the championship. All players commented on the immaculate conditions of the green and the entire course. They went above and beyond, uh, right down to the purposeful, purposeful hole location on the final day. Uh, his team has surely set a high bar for club championship courses here at the POA, and we really want to thank you guys for all your hard work. You. 
We did cater a lunch for this group last Friday. So we did that at the Metfield Pro Shop. So they enjoyed uh, Rhythm and Q for lunch. Good job, guys. You know, I, I would add just a brief comment. When I first came to Bella Vista eight, nine, ten years ago, when we play out there at Dogwood, everybody thought it's a nice course, but generally not in as good a condition as some of the other courses. And I think almost everybody who plays now would say that's the top condition golf course, or certainly in there in the top, the top few. So what a turnaround. Just a terrific joy to play out there. So you guys do a great, great job. Uh, Dwayne uh, has been sick for the last couple days, so I'm going to fill in for him. So you'll notice that our financial reports are uh, quite a bit different than they normally are. We try to make them a little bit edited uh, to cover the information uh, in as much detail as possible. Um, going through... Here's the executive summary, and we're going to cover September of this year and year to date. We'll cover both. And the first one is for the POA, uh, year to date numbers. And you'll see that uh, right now we are better than budget by $1.3 million. Uh, so we're doing really, we're having a very strong year. Uh, 13 out of 15 of our departments are performing better than budget or are in close proximity uh, to budget. So we're very pleased with that. Uh, the pro shop uh, is one of the departments that is not at budget, uh, and it's been challenged by the April flood, uh, the short-term cl closure of Highlands, and the extended closure at the uh, Nine Holes at Berksdale. Uh, food and beverage is also the other department uh, that has been challenged. Uh, compared to budget due to the delayed opening, we delayed about one or two months uh, late on, uh, for Lake Point and several months late uh, for uh, the country club. Uh, which is uh, causing us to miss our number, t our targets. For the month of September, uh, we were worse than budgeted by $87,000, so we gave a little bit back. Uh, the majority of that came from the pro shop. Uh, Highlands was not yet open yet, uh, and the nine holes at Berksdale uh, were closed, which had the majority of the impact. Uh, also, food and beverage missed by $31,000, with the vast majority of that uh, was uh, budgeted for, uh, for the country club, and it was not open. Um, the water department uh, is having a, a fantastic year also. Uh, they're better than budget by $444,000. So if you actually combine the POA and water together, we're better than budget by $1.8 million. Um, uh, going back to the water for year to date, uh, increase of $385,000 in revenue uh, over budget, and that's because of new home construction and increased usage. Uh, investment income was also better than budget by $123,000 uh, due to favorable market conditions. And labor uh, and expense control, they did a very good job. Not only were they over on, ex on labor, uh, over on revenue, they were under on expenses. So that's really nice. Uh, under by $141,000. For the month of September, water uh, was better than budget by $28,000, so they added a little bit extra. Uh, revenue was up due to home construction and overall usage, and labor and expenses uh, control overall were impressive. Um, something new that I've added for this month, a couple stars of the month that I wanted to point out, uh, Scottsdale food and beverage revenue, uh, $7,100 just for one month, $45,000 for the year. Uh, Blowing Springs uh, brought in $31,000, almost $32,000 in revenue compared to last year, same month last year, $19,000. Uh, magazine uh, advertising income was $10,500 compared to a budget of $4,500. And uh, through today, uh, Doug and his team have sold 192 lots uh, which is really very impressive. Uh, and in the month of September, Lay Point contracted 12 events. Uh, a couple capital projects, uh, eight projects were completed, not only completed, but also closed out by our accounting department. 
so the gun range building, uh, Highlands um, renovation, Scottsdale uh, golf course pump, uh, the car pass at Highlands, uh, two uh, 550 series um, service trucks, single axle dump truck, uh, the Lake Win Windsor Ranger boat, and the uh, um, Lake Point kitchen AC. Uh, some additional uh, projects that are coming close to being done, uh, Metfield Cart Pass, actually we spoke with Rob just before he left and they are finished. Uh, the H&H &H study will be done in uh, December. The Country Club we're anticipating in January and the Lake Avalon Beach, if you haven't been there, please stop by, they're doing a fantastic job and we're still on slate for spring 18. Any questions regarding the financials? All right, previous uh, response to previous open forum comments, I think there was one that you have an answer for, Tom? Yeah, the Grisbys came in and they actually didn't attend the meeting. Uh, they, had, they had an obligation uh, to attend, uh, but they gave me a letter with some uh, photos attached. Um, we ended up going down and solving their problems. They had some, uh, uh, they were right next to the golf course and some area needed uh, to be uh, trimmed up a little bit. Uh, and uh, they were also complaining that residents were parking in front of their uh, home because it was close to a stream and we cooperated with the city and were able to add a no parking sign in that area. Um, so I appreciate the efforts of the city to put, get those signs up the next day after I asked and the homeowner was very pleased. Um, All right, great. Um, so open forum tonight. If anybody has any comments or questions uh, for the board, you're welcome to come forward. We promise we'll get a microphone that works. All right. If not, we'll go on to our joint advisory committee reports. I think the lakes. John, you'll, you're going to do the lakes? Uh, yes, I'll take care of the lakes first. Uh, lakes committee went uh, on the 18th. Uh, we had a report from Rick Eccles on the second kayak fishing tournament that happened on the September the 30th. Uh, there were 41 participants. Uh, we also got a report on uh, stout, uh, stock, trout stocking, which will begin November, 8, or November 9th, assuming that the water temperature is less than 70 degrees. For those people that live on Lake Avalon and Loch, or Loch Lomond, uh, <coughs> water drawdown starts on the 9th for Lake Avalon and the 13th for uh, uh, Loch Lomond. Uh, the Lake Rangers had a, uh, a very impressive 2,042 uh, member contacts last month, which was a 50% increase. Uh, they made uh, four, uh, 684 contacts with owners of boats. Uh, we got a very interesting presentation from Chris Fuller, one of the uh, people in the Lakes Department about how we do water sampling and uh, feeding of our lakes to keep our water quality uh, around for a year, and I won't bore everybody with watching that, uh, but there are details in the minutes if you'd like to learn. Uh, the other thing that happened during the lakes meeting, which will be an, an item on our agenda later, is John, uh, or Jason Adams from the Kayak Bass Fishing Association uh, requested that uh, their group be allowed to have six tournaments on our lakes next year. Uh, the lakes. <laughs> so, the, uh, <laughs> the lakes committee voted unanimously to uh, support uh, to support the uh, tournaments and recommended to the board that we approve that uh, at our meeting tonight so that the uh, the kayak fishermen can get this on their national tournament schedule. That pretty much wraps up what happened there. Thank you. All right, good. Uh, recreation, I understand nobody's here from recreation, and John wasn't at the meeting, so we'll skip that one, and recreation can do two months' worth next time. Um, golf, Bill, you going to do the golf? Which one of these microphones? Just come grab one of these. This one works. Last golf committee meeting was uh, November 8th, I'm sorry, October 11th. Uh, Keith Eames reported on golf course maintenance. Um, 
he said, well, he gave a report on dogwood cart pass. Those are now finished. Uh, 2018 maintenance days. Each course will have one day per week, which are designated for maintenance. Scottsdale maintenance will occur in the afternoons. At the conclusion of the morning shotgun, all other courses will be closed in the mornings. Number eight green at Country Club, the new green has been closed to allow for stronger root development. Likely the green will be closed until spring of 2018 to allow the roots to continue to develop late into the fall. Tanier Creek Practice Center, the overseeding has been done. Um, stations will be rotated as usual between the grass area and the mats for the fall winter season. Uh, under golf operations, Philip Wright um, brought up the golf course benches. Most of these are out on dogwood. They're in a very bad condition uh, and need a replacement. Replacement costs are $800 a bench, and after some discussion, uh, those benches are rarely, rarely used. So going forward, uh, the committee discussed the suggestion that the benches and disrepair be removed. Um, and due to the terrain, there are rarely walkers on this course. Uh, there were no objections on the committee. Uh, if, there were, if there were memorial plaques on the benches, those memorial plaques will be retained. Uh, and if ever we put out new benches, some of them would be transferred unless they were designated for a hole. Um, part of the problem out there is the memorial plaques the people that, that donated those benches are, some of them have been years old. We don't even know where the people are anymore. Um, and I, evidently, there's a whole pile of plaques. Um, and eventually, they're being, they're being kept. Um, we had one person, one member, uh, discuss placement of pins that are cut on the slopes. Um, the questions were, why are the holes cut on the slope? Who trains employees? Does anyone check, and is there a standard? Um, this was handed over. Keith Eames' uh, response was, superintendent trains the staff. The placements are usually not usually reviewed during the busy season due to other work demands, and he's going to speak with the superintendents uh, and find out if, if they can train the employees better. That's all. Well, all the pin placements can't be easy every time, Bill. <laughs> Bill, Bill, can I ask you a question? Uh, you know, this the memorial plaques thing, um, I don't know how many of them that we may have. But what's the possibility at each club where we have all those memorial plaques, can we do something like instead of a, a tournament scoreboard, we can do a wall there and put the plaques there as opposed to trying to put them back on, on benches. Is that anything that's possible? Or that, is it even worth the effort? That's an idea we didn't think of. Um, I'll look into that because of the courses that have scoreboards, the backside is rarely used. Uh, there's got to be a place on there where we could you know, mount them permanently. We don't want to. We don't want to forget these people. I, right. I, I, there's probably very few of them that I knew anyway, but we still don't want to forget them. Right. So, just a thought. Bring it up at the next meeting. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. For a long time, we've had kind of a mishmash of these uh, memorials, and we've we've addressed it in several ways, but maybe a bit more organized way in, on each golf course. Good. Um, all right, our newly named community involvement committee. Is anyone here for that one? Or no, John? I'm going to do that one. John, too. okay. Good. Uh, the Community Involvement Committee met uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they finished up the planning on the, uh, their first annual coat drive. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen uh, your recreation newsletter or your BOA newsletter, uh, the coat drive starts on the 28th of this month, ends on the 17th of November. Uh, there will be uh, containers. Uh, there's one outside in the lobby here at all the POA facilities, Allen's, Harps, and the two Arvis banks in town. Uh, for those of you who would like to be entertained, uh, there is a video on the POA website uh, of a little commercial for the coat drive. Uh, we shot earlier in the week with uh, about a half a dozen uh, fourth graders. 
an experience I will not forget in the near future. Uh, the, uh, the committee is working on some ideas for some things they'd like to accomplish next year. Uh, their, their next big event is they're all helping with Flea in the Park, which is this Saturday. So for those of you who would like some entertainment, come down to Blowing Springs Park, uh, where they have a flea market at Blowing Springs Park. And on that, they've adjourned. Good, and I understand Pat was at the Recreation Committee meeting, so you could give yeah. us an update on that. Um, just uh, briefly, every, uh, as you know, at the Recreation Committee meetings, um, everyone reports on um, a recreation area for which they have responsibility to monitor. And um, everything was reported well. Uh, the, there was a report on the, the Wiener race that took place down at, um, down at the Loch Lomond ball field. Um, and we went down there, and it was the craziest thing you've ever seen. I mean, there are just hundreds and hundreds of people with their dogs from all over the place. And they just do a tre tremendous job. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, it was very, very well attended. The Blowing Springs uh, RV Park is going uh, gung-ho. Uh, it is regularly booked full every weekend, and the what started off as just a few tent campers, uh, maybe four or five campsites, has expanded to, um, I think the last weekend before Joan went down there and there were like 12 to 14 campsites up. And for each tent and a campsite, we get $5. So, every, and, and we provide nothing but a plot of land. Um, and so it's going very well. Uh, if you have more than one tent for a family, let's say, you have to pay $5 per tent. And uh, it's not a big money maker, but it, 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 it does provide a service, especially to those people who are using the bike trails. I mean, it's just heavily, heavily used. Um, Kim uh, Carlson mentioned that uh, ads are being run on uh, the um, KHOG station <laughs> 106.5, the Vela Vista station. Um, and that has changed hands and expanded the broadcasting area of it. Uh, there have been ads in the McDonald County papers and digital ads in Joplin. So we're pulling people all the way from the Joplin area down here to take part in the amenities. Um, that's about it. All right, great. Uh, old business. What, one of the small addition, uh, tent camping is $15. I was mistaken. We're just I off by 300 percent. I am Pat. sometimes mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, old business. Uh, Doug, I we'll turn that one over to you. This is a second and final reading for revisions to policy 1.04 and 9.03. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the, <coughs> the revisions to policy 1.04. I make a motion that we approve revisions to policy 1.04 and 9.03, which changes the name of the Young Residents Committee to, to the Community Involvement Committee. Uh, this is the second and final reading. Second. David seconds. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the, ag on the agenda. Uh, the bass fishing uh, tournament uh, would uh, like the ba kayak bass fishing would like to utilize the POA lakes for uh, six tournaments in 2018. They're requesting now to do that because they'd like to add it to their calendar. Uh, the lakes committee uh, is uh, in favor of this. Uh, they voted in favor at their October 18th meeting, and staff is also in favor of this. We ask that the board um, support this uh, with a vote. Okay. Entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the proposed usage of the POA lakes by kayak bass fishing. Second. I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? 
Uh, next up it was the addition to the agenda. Uh, we are seeking to uh, modify our uh, license at Metfield. Right now it is a uh, beer and wine license and we'd like to add uh, liquor to it. Um, I will add uh, separately that uh, we are also modifying the license at Highlands, but that modification does not require the vote of the board. So we're working on both of those. Highlands is, situation is just a little bit different uh, where we would like to uh, be able to sell um, uh, cans of beer that are unopened and then taken onto the golf course and consumed. So we're, we're working on both problems. One doesn't require the vote, uh, but one does. So uh, I ask that the board uh, make a motion to approve uh, this change for Metfield. Your motion? Second. A motion, a second. Any discussion? Uh, someone's got to read the motion. Oh. Who has we have the motion, motion to, to approve the submission of the application for a private club permit to serve liquor at the Metfield Clubhouse. Thank you. Second. Ruth, do you Does this permit require additional training or employees? Yeah. Well, it, it, The umbrella will uh, will cover that, meaning our training covers the same subject matter. Um, so we don't differentiate, but uh, um, we will provide additional training to ensure that they're fully aware. But it really, from our perspective, it doesn't change much. I mean, it's the consumption of alcohol, and we want to make sure that people act responsibly. Will there be a um, uh, microphone? I'm sorry. Will there be a, um, a cart service? Uh, right now, we're only uh, doing the cart service <coughs> at uh, uh, Kingswood and Berksdale, and we're, we're experiencing some success, uh, but uh, not enough where uh, I would want to expand that service at this time. But this change in licensing would allow us to do that, should we want to? Correct, um, but the main change that we're, we're seeking is to be able to sell um, liquor. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Any announcements? Well, the oh, the open. Uh, Valley, oh, sorry about that. Okay, um, uh, brief update on the Valley Task Force. Uh, we met with um, uh, uh, our engineering company. Uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, they are providing us with updates every two weeks. And uh, at this point, what they're in, they're in the fact-finding uh, phase of their uh, task. Uh, they've been doing surveying work. Uh, they've been, uh, we've been fielding many, many emails on uh, getting dam information that we have. Uh, and also fielding questions regarding the makeup of the dam and, and, and different statistical information. So that it's very clear right now they're in that fact-finding um, phase of, their, of the operation. Uh, we're still on target for a uh, December 30th a completion of the, uh, of the entire study. All right, sounds like good and continuous discussion with uh with uh, those people who are working on that for us. Um, all right, short meeting for such a large room, but uh, announcements, the next GM uh, meeting will be on November 2nd at 9.30 a.m. That's the closed executive session. Uh, there will be a community budget presentation on Thursday, November the 9th at 6 p.m. here at Reardon Hall. And the next Board of Directors uh, regular meeting will be uh, Thursday, November 16th at 6.30 p.m. at Reardon Hall. And with that, we're adjourned.